Okay, so this is the crucial question. How do we model context word, the probability for context word given um, center word? What is the structure that we will use? Okay, and here we really get to this third assumption that um, irrespective of where the word occurs in the context window, we're going to treat this probability the same. So basically, if we have the word loves and we have the word sun here, we're going to treat the probability of sun the same, irrespective of whether it's two words before the center word or um, one word after the center word, that probability will be the same. Okay, now for each word type, we are going to define two types of word vectors. V, when the word W is a center word, and U, when W is a context word. Now, if we've got a center word C and a context word O, I'm not exactly sure why we use O for context words, but I will do that throughout. Um, you can think about it as O as the little circle around the window. So everything inside the circle, that's a context word, okay? So for a center word C and a context word O, we're going to use the following model structure. So we want the probability of context word given center word, or I'm going to sometimes write it out just very concisely in this way because the notation gets a little bit um, bloaty. Okay, so we want the probability of context word given center word. Okay, and we've got these continuous vector representations now. So this V is some vector in a high dimensional space. Okay, and this U is also some vector in some high dimensional space. And these things are our word embeddings. Okay, and we've got um, center word embeddings and we've got context word embeddings. And how we're going to model this probability is the following. What we're going to do is we're going to take the dot product between the context word embedding and the center word embedding. That's where, where we're going to start. Okay, so we're going to take the dot product between the context word embedding and the center word embedding. We're going to denote it like this. Dot product, I can put a little dot in between them, um, or you can think about it like this, that you take the transpose of the context word embedding and you multiply that um, using vector multiplication with VC. Okay, but that is the dot product. Now, probabilities needs to be positive, okay? And um, this number, if we just take the dot product, can be between, be between negative infinity and infinity. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the exponential of that number, and that gives us a number between zero and infinity, okay? Not exactly what we want, but at least we don't have negative probabilities anymore. What we actually want is we need to make sure that this thing, if we sum up over all the different types of words that the context word can take on, can take on, then this thing needs to sum to one. And one way to do that is then to basically say, well, let's normalize this thing with the sum. If I sum up all the exponentials over all the different type of context words that I can have. So that's a little k. And I take the dot product with uh, my center word, and I'm summing up little k from one to capital V over the vocabulary. And if I do this, then this is properly normalized. It gives me a value between zero and one. And if I sum up the probabilities for all the different context words, then I will get a probability of one. Now, if you've done a course on neural networks, you've, you probably have seen this before. This is actually the softmax function. It's specifically the oath element in the, uh, in the softmax output. So I sometimes write this as O and, and then, um, I'll define the matrix U in a second and then VC, you know. Okay, so this is the oath element from the softmax. I will unpack this in a second. The important thing is just we've defined it in such a way that these things are valid, valid probabilities and for any center word and a context word, I can get a probability out according to my model. We still need to figure out how to learn these U and Vs and we'll get to that in a second, but you now understand the model structure. Uh, let's just unpack that softmax um, bit a little bit more explicitly. So if we have an uh, input, we can think of this as uh, a model that takes a center word as input. And then what we're going to get out is basically a vector, that's the size of our vocabulary, indicating the probability that each of the words in my vocabulary occurs as a context word 
uh, as a context word for this center word. So we can write this out as a little model, okay? Um, um, this model takes in the center word, and then it outputs a probability for the first word in my vocabulary occurring as a context word given the center word, the second word in my vocabulary occurring as a context word given the center word, and so on up to the very last word in my vocabulary. Now, if we've defined um, each of these probabilities in this way, then you can substitute this into the definition here. And then what you end up having is you have the dot product for each of the words in my vocabulary with the exponential for each of them normalized by the sum over the entire vocabulary. And this, if you go and look at the softmax video that I have, is exactly equal to this, where U is a stacked version of all of these um, context word embeddings. Okay, so you end up with a softmax there. So, so the softmax is really this enormous vector. Each element in that vector is between 0 and 1. And there are capital V elements in that vector. And if I sum up all the elements in that vector, then I get a 1. Now, if this is our structure, we actually end up with two sets of word embeddings. We end up with all these Vs for the center words and all these U's for the context words, okay? And I've already said that I can stack all the U's into one big matrix U. I can do something similar for the V's and end up um, by stacking up all the center word embeddings into one big matrix V. And the combination of this V and U matrices, that's what makes up the theta that we've spoken about before, the parameters of the model. And these are the parameters that we're going to have to learn using the loss function, optimizing the loss function, and we'll look at that in a second. The one crucial thing, though, is after you've learned your model, you end up with a bunch of V um, vectors and a bunch of U vectors, and now you want to use them downstream as representations of your words. And for Skipgram, normally what we do is we use the context of vectors U at test time um, as the representations forwards. You could also use um, V. They're going to be quite similar, and there are also other options. We will look at Glove in a future video, and Glove actually basically adds up the vectors and, and uses that as your vector representation. But for Skipgram, we use um, the U at test time, and there are some empirical tests that show that this is a good approach to follow.